Hello everyone, and welcome back to Focus Attack Tech Corner. It's been quite some time since the last video, but I assure you that we're still working hard to bring you new gear to try. Today's video is a bit of a shorter one, but not at all less important by any means. Today I'm proud to introduce to you the Bitbang Gaming Pasta Board, or Passes All Signals to Another Board. The purpose of this board is twofold. One, it allows you to utilize boards like the Brook Universal Fighting Board to give your arcade stick access to other platforms previously not available. And two, it does it in a way that allows you to retain most of the arcade stick's factory functions. The Pasta Board is about as plug and play as you can get when it comes to arcade sticks using technology from the most recent generation. It goes without saying that the Pasta Board also works with Bitbang Gaming's own PCB offerings as well. In the case of today's project, the Pasta Board is being installed into a first generation Razer Panthera. You might be familiar with this build already if you've watched previous videos from us. Thanks to Pasta, the days of cutting up or replacing all of your factory wiring are over. The Pasta Board does well to guarantee that your arcade stick will still look clean and functional on the inside. The difficulty of today's install is fairly average, with only a few points of potential fault that need care and attention. Included with your Pasta Board purchase are all the wiring harnesses necessary to complete this install as shown in the video. Please be aware that a control PCB is not included with the Pasta Board purchase. You'll need to provide one of those on your own. This is a sizable upgrade in performance for any builder who wants to stay at the cutting edge. Well, I'd say that's enough of an introduction to this board's capabilities. Shall we get started once again? Let's get started by talking about the tools that you'll need and the tools that you might want to help get this job done. For starters, I recommend using a small set of tech drivers here. The screws you'll be working with are pretty small in size, so a full-size screwdriver might not be the ideal play. You should also have a small pair of nippers or side cutters if you will. They're a great thing to have here. They'll certainly be important later and they can make your life a lot easier. I can't recommend these enough. I really, really like using angled tweezers when working with wiring, especially in the case of this install where very thin gauge wiring is present. You don't necessarily need these, but they're certainly nice to have. In addition to this, it's good to have a 2.5 millimeter hex wrench. This will be used to tighten the control PCB mounting bolts that come included with your kit. Last but not least is a completely optional tool to keep in your arsenal, a temperature controlled soldering iron. In my case, I wanted to completely detach the wiring from the original Panthera PCB, so you'll see me desoldering the wires later in this video. But let me be clear here, you do not have to do this. Cutting the wires from the board with your nippers is just fine. With our main tools established and at the ready, let's get to building. Let's start by opening the Razer Panthera's inner compartment. Here you'll need your Phillips head tech driver. We'll be focusing on the PCB area which is covered by a black shroud fastened down by four Phillips head screws. Remove all four screws by turning them counterclockwise one at a time until all four are removed from their fastening points. Don't lose these screws, you'll need them later, so please set them aside in a safe place for the time being. Once the screws are removed, please lift the PCB shroud up and set it aside. You won't be needing it any longer, so feel free to do whatever you like with it. You should now have clear view of the Panthera's control PCB. If you look closely, you can see that all of the wiring connectors and USB connector wiring are hot glued to reduce chance of disconnection. This is generally the same on all first generation Pantheras, but there might be more or less on yours depending on which production batch yours was in. Regardless of the amount, all connectors need to be deglued. You can do this by picking away at the dried glue with some fairly sharp tweezers. This doesn't take a whole lot of finesse to do, but do be careful around the USB wires because they're hard soldered to the board. Take your time here, especially if you're contemplating reusing the control PCB for another purpose. Clear all of the original hot glue off the board connectors, then carefully wiggle the connectors up and off of the control PCB. 
Try to avoid tugging on individual wires. It's better to pull on multiple wires in one connector for even support if you have to pull on a cable. With all the connectors disconnected, you should be left with a mostly disconnected board, the USB wiring being the exception. You have two options here. Use your side cutters to clip the wires right at where they connect to the board, or desolder the wires so as to not leave scrap wire behind in the board's through holes. In my case, I chose to desolder, but again, you do not have to do this. Most people will likely just cut the wires. Clip the wires as close to the board as you can get so you have a good bit of wire left to work with. Now that the board is completely disconnected from the arcade stick, you can go ahead and toss it aside. Trim the ends of the USB wiring if you have any ratty insulation. We need to reuse these wires on the pasta board, so be extremely careful when doing this next part. These wires are very thin gauge and can easily be completely cut instead of stripped. We want to slightly strip the insulation back on each wire. In the interest of avoiding dealing with frayed wire, I like to twist the exposed wire and make it nice and straight. It's much easier to install into a terminal when it's not fanning out everywhere. With your wires ready to go, grab your pasta board. You'll want to seat it in the area that the original Panthera control PCB used to be, focusing on keeping the terminal block as close to the USB wiring as possible. Use the four screws that you removed from the original board to fasten the pasta board down. Install as opposite of removal, clockwise to tighten the screws down. We're using the good and tight method here. No need to over tighten, but as this is an electronic component, be sure to tighten these mounting screws well. After handling the physical install of the pasta board, we will need to move the newly stripped USB wires into their new homes. Each wire will be installed into its own individual slot of the terminal block and then the screw on top of the corresponding slot will need to be tightened down to complete the connection. The order of these wires is as follows, from left to right. Yellow, black, green, white, and red. This would be a good opportunity to use your tweezers to feed the wires into their terminal slots, as they're a bit finicky otherwise. Be certain to tighten the screw terminals well, but not so tight that you start stripping the screw heads. Once you finish this, the pasta board is officially integrated into the Panthera. Do a tug test on the wires to make sure that they're properly installed. We aren't quite finished with this job, but if you've made it this far, congratulations, you've successfully done the hardest part of the install. Take a break if needed, otherwise we can keep going. Let's get started on the plug and play wiring. This part is pretty easy, so just follow along as you see me do. Take the 20 pin ribbon cable that was included in your kit and connect it to the 20 pin connector on the front of the pasta board. Make sure the ribbon is facing in your direction and not away from you. Next you will need to reconnect all of the Panthera's wiring connectors. While most of the connectors are keyed to specifically go into a certain plug, please follow along carefully so as to avoid making any improper connections. There are six connectors that need to be plugged in in total so do a head count to make sure that you've gotten everything that's loose.
As always, double check to make sure every connector is properly seated. This will relieve you of any unnecessary troubleshooting going forward. With that completed, grab the plastic standoffs that are included with your pasta kit. You'll need to seat them in the areas shown, on top of the mounting posts. You can then take your control PCB of choice, in my case it's the Brook Universal, and lay it on top of all four standoffs. Take the four 2.5mm hex screws included with your kit and thread them into the four corners of the board. Tighten them like the screws you did previously. Tight, but not so tight that it adds stress to the board. Use your better judgment here. Once you've confirmed that everything is fastened into place, take the loose end of the ribbon cable connected to the pasta board and connect it to the 20 pin connector of your control PCB. Like the other connections, make sure it's seated well. Now we will move on to connecting the auxiliary functions of the Panthera. Grab one of the four pin wiring harnesses included in the pasta kit. You'll be installing this in the turbo connector on your control PCB. Seat it well, then connect it to the turbo connector on the pasta board. Grab a 5-pin wiring harness from your pasta kit. This will drive the player LEDs, so please connect it to both the player LED connector of the control PCB as well as the player LED connector on the pasta board. Again, check to make sure that it is properly seated. Route it however you feel is necessary. This can be a bit of a tight area to work in, so don't be shy to use your tweezers here. Now you will need another 4-pin wiring harness from the pasta kit. We will use this to connect the L3, R3, and touchpad input functions. Like the wiring harnesses before it, please connect this to the L3, R3 touchpad connector on the control PCB, and then use the L3, R3 touchpad connector on the pasta board. Check that you're making a proper connection by way of the harnesses being seated well. Last but not least is the left stick, directional pad, and right stick connections. Do not skip this, as this will allow you to control which directional mode you are using on the Panthera. Your pasta kit comes with two harness variations for this, as we've noticed that Brook occasionally changes the connector used for this function. In this case, I won't be using the single connector harness. Instead, I'll be using the individual connector harness. 
This is pretty simple. Connect the wires directly from pin to pin, making sure that they go in order from top to bottom. Seat them well. You're almost finished. All that's left now is to plug both ends of the short USB cable into both boards. Once that's done, you can test your work. If you did everything right, it should work perfectly. Job well done! I know this was a bit of a shorter tutorial this time around, but I hope that it's useful to you. I hope to see you again next time. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe.